Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at people share their online dating horror stories. Yeah, let's just get right into the video. My nightmare began on January 8, 2014 when I started texting with a beautiful woman who I knew was out of my league. I'm a 50-ish Caucasian guy, out of shape, overweight, but otherwise stable and normal. She was a 30-year-old black woman, college educated, stunningly beautiful and very elegant and slender. Nonetheless, after a few days of texting, I invited her to join me for dinner at a very nice restaurant downtown. To my dismay, she actually accepted my invitation. I was waiting for her at the bar when she walked in, my jaw hit the floor. She was so beautiful, I literally lost my breath for a moment. She was taller than me in her heels and was wearing a very beautiful short dress with the most amazing legs I had ever seen. She greeted me with a bright smile and a gentle hug and we were escorted to our table. We had a very good date. The conversation flowed and she seemed to have a good time as well. We decided to continue the date and went to a couple of bars for drinks. Finally, she said it was time to go home and since she had taken Uber earlier, I offered to give her a ride home and she quickly agreed. All this time, I thought that even though the date was fun and comfortable, I assumed it would possibly lead to a friendship at best considering the obvious differences. Well, when we got to her place, we talked for a few minutes more. I offered to walk her to her door, but she declined. She then got out and walked around to my door. She leaned through the window and planted a very brief but sensual kiss on my lips. My heart stopped. She then leaned back and smiled. I was able to stammer out an invitation to go out again and she accepted without hesitation. <laughs> I'm not ready for the bad thing because this sounds perfect. I was on cloud nine. I knew that this remarkable woman would have a profound effect on my life. It seemed predestined. Fast forward a couple of weeks. She and I had been seeing each other nearly every day and I was developing strong feelings already. But something was wrong. I had a weird nagging sense that she was hiding something. Although she was being very affectionate, something just felt off. Then finally it happened. We were out at a bar together. It was a good time but she seemed distracted. As we were leaving she turned to me and said in a serious tone, we need to talk. I thought this is it. The differences between us are too much for her and I'm about to be friend zoned. But nothing prepared me for what came next. She asked me to just listen and not say anything and I agreed. She then started out by saying that she had developed strong feelings for me but there was something that I needed to know about her that might make me want to change my mind about pursuing a relationship. My mind was spinning and so many scenarios raced through my head. Is she married? Is she a criminal? Then I remembered a few days earlier when we were making out and I touched her breast lightly and realized that she had breast implants because it was quite hard. She looked at me and with a tear in her eye, she told me that she has stage four breast cancer. She was originally diagnosed four years earlier as stage 3 and had beaten it back into remission after having a double mastectomy along with radiation treatment and chemotherapy. Now it had returned as stage 4 and she was to start chemo again in two weeks. I was floored. She then stated that she would understand if I wanted to turn and run and she wouldn't think less of me for it. My response was to reiterate that I adored her. And I thought she was an amazing woman and if she wanted me to take this journey with her, that I would be honoured to do so. We kissed and just held each other for a while. Finally, she said goodnight and I went to her car to go home. I cried all the way home. We had a full amazing year together. Oh my gosh, I'm about to cry. <laughs> but I have to finish reading this. I had to go to Japan for work and she met me there in between chemo treatments. She never cried and was always elegant. I learned what the true definition of grace meant. We lived a lifetime in 2014. She died nine months ago, 15 months after we met. I am a much better man for having met her and shared in her struggle. I love you and miss you so much. <laughs> Whoa, I was not expecting this. I thought this was going to be like, they didn't look like their picture or something, you know. Oh, no. That's so sad. I just love how he stayed and shared the journey with her and told her how much he loved her. Oh. 
that was sad, but also it just taught us so much, you know. <laughs> Went on a date with a girl who had already told her whole family about me before we even met and she wanted me to meet them in person on the first date. Nope. Oh. She hasn't even met him yet. And she did all this already. She was so ready to marry him. <laughs> what the heck? What? That's so odd. What if he doesn't look like his picture? <laughs> it's Tuesday. I matched up with this girl. I'll call her Elle. And we chatted back and forth for a bit. She's cute and I suggest meeting up and I try to find a nice neutral spot near her where we can get together. She invites me to a barbecue with some of her former co-workers. I'm pretty hesitant to this at first as I don't want to meet someone for the first time at some barbecue. Well, I caved and I ended up meeting her at this barbecue and in all honesty, it was pretty fun. Elle and I are getting along pretty well. She's trying to feed me shots of rum. I don't have any because I have to work in the morning and all is pretty great. Anyways, barbecue comes to an end and she abruptly says, okay, I'll talk to you later and leaves. Confused, I drive my butt home and as soon as I get off the freeway, she shoots me a text saying, you could have come over to my house if you asked. I tell her I still can. She shoots me her address and I turn my butt around and speak to her house. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why do I find this funny? <laughs> She doesn't live in the greatest part of town, but I was too certain that I was going to get some, so I didn't really care. I pull up to her house and she meets me out front and greets me as I walk up. Things you do when you're thirsty. As I'm walking up the stairs to her door, she mentions that she takes in stray cats. I'm allergic to cats, but really as long as I don't touch my eyes, it's a non-issue. Also, I'm thinking she probably has maybe four cats at most. These thoughts are running through my mind as I'm still walking up the steps when she says, so I have like 15 cats, and then opens the front door. The front living room was pitch black, but I saw at least a dozen pair of eyes all turn and look at the now open front door. Then they all scattered like a bunch of cockroaches. Now, I haven't broken stride this entire time and continue right through the door. As I crossed the threshold, I thought I had walked through a wall as the snow that washed over me was horrific and it felt like it had weight. Cat piss, undeniably, it was pure cat piss from 15 unwashed stray cats. There isn't a light on in this house, but I can still see stacks of bins all over the room like it was something out of one of those hoarder TV shows. From the tops of these rubbish towers sat some of the cats peering down at me. Oh my gosh, that sounds bad. That sounds so bad. What? What? Her house sounds like an entire mess. I would get anxious just looking at it, even though I'm a pretty messy person to begin with. That would make me anxious. Mm. Elle quickly ushers me to her room, which happens to smell like bleach, as my nostrils have started to burn from a smell other than cat piss. She mentions having just cleaned her room and having scrubbed everything down with bleach, as if that's a normal thing to do when you clean a room. Who scrubs the room with bleach? Any sane guy probably would have backed out well before now, and I should have too, but I had come too far and was way too hard to turn back now. We get comfy on her bed and she makes herself comfortable as the little spoon. I make some advances during this and she's completely unresponsive. So after about 45 minutes of nothing, I tell her I need to get home and go to bed since it's 2 a.m. and I have work in the morning. During my entire time at her house, I tried really hard not to touch my face, but I knew since walking in there, there was no way I was getting out unscathed. I drive home and my eyes are itchy and starting to water. After getting home, I look in the mirror and my eyes just look bad, completely bloodshot and itchy. The allergy has never lasted more than a couple of hours after starting, so I went to bed and figured I should be fine by the morning. Boy, was I wrong. I wake up with my alarm at 4.45 a.m., bleary-eyed and feeling bad as I expected. My eyes are heavy and I can barely open them as I shamble to the bathroom to take a shower. I flip on the lights and see, or rather barely see, a horror show. My right eyelid has swollen out to the point where it was nearly in line with my brow and was completely swollen shut. My left was not much better. Even worse, it felt like sand had been poured in both of them. I had to call in sick to work and go to the doctor to get a prescription to bring the swelling down, 
when it looked like it wasn't going down after a couple hours. I text Elle mentioning that apparently I was more allergic to cats than I remembered and never got a response. Swirling took about five days to go down completely. I'm so confused at the whole thing, honestly. Jeez, dude. <laughs> How thirsty were you? <laughs> because he was allergic to cats, but he still went in when there were 15 cats. This just sounds sad. This is like when you decide to go out, but then once you're out, you just want to go home kind of thing. My buddy isn't the smartest man. He picked a chick up and drove to a motel. They were walking into the room and she says, Oh, I forgot my purse in the car. Do you mind if I go grab it? He says, yeah, that's fine, and tosses her the keys. Five minutes later, he walks outside, wondering where she is, and his car is gone. <laughs> she went on a date just to steal his car? Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are, and as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!